Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to another installment of the Library Lunch Hour coming to you uh, live from the Central Library and Archives located on 119th Street and 3rd Avenue in East Harlem at the Silverman School for Social Work. My name is Anibal Arocho. I'm the library manager here at the Center for Puerto Rican Studies Library. Um, and today we're doing what is one of my favorite uh, library lunch hours, uh, our, our book unboxing. We do these a couple of times a year, and this is just a really nice way to check in with everyone and, and let you all know um, some of the new titles that we have available um, on our shelves here at the Centro Library. Um, and uh, titles that you can come and, and check out for yourself. Uh, if you'd like to make an appointment to come view materials here at Centro, it's one, these are gonna be integrated into our collection of over 20,000 books. Um, and if you and if you can't make it to Centro and you just, you just wanna know what's out there in terms of uh, Puerto Rican studies literature, um, then we will be making a list of these titles available um, after the event. And th this event also will be available uh, to view later on YouTube. Um, so let's get let's get started because I have a lot of books and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get uh, through them all. Uh, so the first one is uh, it's a board book. It's a children's board book, and it's called Caras Lindas uh, Visionarios Puerto Ricanos, and this is by Adrián Román, uh, the artist viajero. Um, it's never too early to introduce children to the cultural leaders you admire. With Puerto Ricans making up approximately 10% of the Latino population in the United States, there is a need to see ourselves reflected more frequently in literature, both inside and outside of our classrooms. This collection was created to educate children about notable Puerto Ricans cultural leaders in English and in Spanish. So some of the people that are highlighted here include Pedro Alviso Campos and Lola Rodriguez de Tio. Um, let's see who else. Uh, and Arturo Alfonso Schomburg. So shout out to our friends at the Schomburg Center. So um, our next title is Caribes 2.0, New Media, Globalization, and the Afterlives of Disaster. And this is by Josiana Arroyo. In Caribes 2.0, author Josiana Arroyo looks at the Caribbean media sphere in the 21st century. Arroyo argues that we have seen a return to tropes such as blackface, brownface, cultural and ethnic stereotypes and violent representations of the poor, the marginalized and the racialized. Caribes 2.0 looks at these tropes as well as the works of written bloggers, performers and photographers that have become media figures or have used new media platforms to promote their work and examines how they are challenging and negotiating these media representations. All right, next we have a poetry book. This is Catch a Glow. Catch a Glow. This is by Carl Michael Iglesias. If hurricane poetry was a genre, Carl Michael Iglesias would be at the vanguard of its practice. Catch a Glow is a book that comes at you from the outset. The fragmented diaspora is alive in Iglesias' concision. His witness is biting in its undecorated minimalism. We are literally left to deal with the white spaces between the wreckage depicted in these poems. Okay. Next we have one of my favorite publications and it should be one of yours as well. This is a, the issue of the newest issue of the Central Journal um, and includes various essays and uh, book reviews. Um, among those is uh, an essay written by one of our former colleagues here at the library, Coral Salomon. Uh, documentary Heritage at Risk, Puerto Rican Public Records in the Social Media Age and the Frailty of Digital Memory. Uh, another one is um, the State of Pay Television in Puerto Rico, Regulation, Globalization and Concentration. Um, so this, this book can be picked up at Centros Bodega. We have an online store called La Bodega and you can pick up uh, issues of the Central Journal and other central publications. Next we have Las Ciudades del Deseo, and this is by Elena Valdez, and um, Las Ciudades del Deseo explores the representation of gender, sexuality, and urban space in contemporary narratives from Cuba and the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. By examining a corpus of novels published since 2000, this book shows how the changes in urban landscape create a new image of the city that destroys traditional gender roles and produces different discourses on sexuality. Next, we have 
another interesting title here. And this is edited, uh, this is Cuba and Puerto Rico, Transdisciplinary Approaches to History, Literature and Culture. And this is edited by Carmen Heidi Rivera and Jorge Duani. This volume is the first systematic comparative study of Cuba and Puerto Rico from both a historical and contemporary perspective. In these essays, contributors highlight the interconnectedness of the two archipelagos in social categories such as nation, race, class, and gender to encourage a more nuanced and multifaceted study of the relationships between the islands and their diasporas. Another great title. Next, we have this title here, Decolonizing Diasporas, Radical Mappings of Afro-Atlantic Literature. Uh, this is by Yomaira Figueroa Vasquez. Uh, mapping literature from Spanish-speaking Sub-Saharan African and Afro-Latinx Caribbean diasporas, Decolonizing Diasporas argues that the work of diasporic writers and artists from Equatorial Guinea, Puerto Rico, and Dominican Republic, and Cuba offer new worldviews that unsettle and dismantle the logics of colonial modernity. Next, we have a title from someone who is very near and dear to us. This is a title, um, Drops of Inclusivity by Milagros Denis Rosario. Drops of Inclusivity examines race and racism on the island of Puerto Rico by combining a wide angle historical narrative with the individual stories of black Puerto Ricans. While some of these afro boricuas such as Roberto Clemente and Ruth Fernandez are well known, others such as Cecilia Horta and Juan Falú Sarzuela have been largely forgotten if remembered at all. So another great title coming to us. And this is a, a SUNY Press title as well. Next, we have Fractal Families. All right, Fractal Families in New Millennium Narratives by Afro-Puerto Rican Women. And this is by John T. Maddox IV. Colonial narratives described Puerto Rico as a familial plantation governed by white men and served by black women. But Puerto Rican women writing today are changing the story. Uh, the book surveys diasporic fiction written by Afro-Puerto Rican women whose historical storytelling reimagines the island's collective family around particularly active women, survivors, creators, and activists. John T. Maddox IV argues that these stories by such writers as Mayra Santo Febres, Dalma Llanos Figueroa, uh, and Ivan Denis Crosario reveal imaginations committed to both deliberative and traumatic experiences of a new fractal family. For any fans of science fiction, we got a great science fiction anthology. You see, it's a thick science fiction anthology. And this is called Fricción Cuántica, Antología de Ciencia Ficción desde Puerto Rico y su Diáspora. And this is edited by Eric Durandal Stormcrow. And uh, esta antología cuenta con ciencia ficción clásica, pero de igual modo con representación de los nuevos subgéneros del sci-fi, a saber la mutación del cuerpo a la cuerpa, la estética steampunk, el afrofuturismo, el futurismo feminista y el futurismo antiano. So it's a good uh, representation of Boricua science fiction writers and topics. Um, next we have a pretty interesting book here. This is a uh, Habitar, Habitar lo Imposible. And this is a uh, Danza y Exper Exper Experimentación en Puerto Rico. This is by um, uh, this is edited by Susan Omar and Nivia Pastrana Santiago. And this is the primer libro de investigación dedicado íntegramente al tema. Este libro estudia cuatro décadas de exploraciones experimentales en la, en la danza puertorriqueña desde diferentes perspectivas, las de artistas independientes que conforman esta comunidad y las de estudios de diferentes campos que desarrollan distintos acercamientos analíticos y maneras de escribir sobre la danza. So as you can see, we, we collect in a variety of genres, of different interests and subject material. Um, we try to yeah, have a little something for everyone here at Centro. 
Um, next we have, we have the catalog for the current exhibition that's here at the Hunter, Hunter East Harlem Gallery, Ida y Vuelta. And this is edited by Laura Bravo and Jorge Duani and others. Ida y Vuelta, Experiencias de la Migración en el Arte Puerto Rican Contemporáneo is a sweeping show featuring 19 Puerto Rican artists whose works respond to the experience of many Puerto, Rican li Puerto Ricans living abroad. Migration has been a determining issue in Puerto, Rican, in Puerto Rico's recent history, especially since 2012 due to significant, significant crises and natural disasters. Curated by Dr. Laura Bravo, the exhibition first opened in February 20, 2017 at the History, Anthropology, and Art Museum at the University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras campus. Um, and it is now um, exhibited here at the Hunter East Harlem Gallery. You can come in and see it when it's open. It is currently open to the public, so come and see it and also come visit the Central Library while you're here. Um, the show is divided into five parts, migration as a risky endeavor, political, economic, or social problems as the leading causes of migration, intermediate spaces between geography and memory, a life in constant, constant transit, and displaced identities. Next we have literature of catastrophe, na nature, disaster, and revolution in Latin America. This is by Carlos Fonseca. And this book investigates how nature and history intertwine during the violent aftermath of the Latin American Wars of Independence. Synthesizing intellectual history readings of textual production, the literature of catastrophe reimagines re the emergence of the modern Latin American nation states beyond the scope of the harmonious foundational fictions that mark the emergence of the nation as an organic community. Next we have here we have the Museum of the Old Colony, the art, an art installation by Pablo Delano. This is edited by Laura Katzman. The Museum of the Old Colony is an ongoing conceptual art installation by visual artist Pablo Delano that addresses the complex history of his native Puerto Rico after the Spanish-American War, when the Caribbean archipelago was seized by the United States from Spain as a possession. Appropriating archival photographs, film footage, and popular artifacts that Delano collects and curates for his performative museum, uh, the installation provocatively critiques the stereotypes and entrenchments perceptions of Puerto Rico disseminated in mainstream media over a century. The work thus speaks to the relationship between US imperial power and the island nation and to the lasting and devastating legacies of colonial rule. So it's a, a lot of great images here as well. Um, a lot of explanation of the process that goes into curating and creating an exhibition. Um, So uh, Vicks vapor rub with uh, military vessels at the top, which is pretty interesting. All right. Next we have a Pura Belpre honor book, and this is by Lilian Rivera, Never Look Back. A Pura Belpre honor winner and a retelling of the Greek myth Orpheus and Eurydice, featuring contemporary Afro-Latinx characters. Yuri comes to the Bronx as a girl haunted, haunted by losing everything in Hurricane Maria and by an evil spirit, Ato. She fully expects the tragedy that befell her and her family in Puerto Rico to catch up with her in New York. Yet for a time, she can almost set this fear aside because there's this boy, Faeus, in a golden voice bachata singing charmer, ready to spend the summer on the beach with his friends, serenading his on again, off again flame. That changes when he meets Yuri. All he wants is to put a smile on her face and fight off her demons. But some dangers are too powerful, even for the strongest love. And as the world threatens to tear them apart, Yuri and Faeus must face, must fight for each other and their lives. So some young adult literature there as well. 
Here we have another uh, catalog, and this is the catalog for the exhibition that's currently on display at the Whitney. So, No Existe Un Mundo Post Huracán, Puerto Rican Art in the Wake of Hurricane Maria. And this is by Mar uh, Marcela Guerrero. Uh, a penetrating survey of contemporary art from Puerto Rico and the diaspora created since Hurricane Maria. Centering on works made by nearly 20 multi-generational artists from Puerto Rico and the diaspora, this volume responds to numerous contemporary issues affecting Puerto Rico, including Hurricane Maria and its devastation, as well as austerity measures, political unrest, and the COVID-19 pandemic. Included uh, are works across mediums, including painting, video installation, uh, performance art, and poetry, made between 2017 and 2022. No Existe Mundo Post Huracan demonstrates ways that these artists have forged a path through adversity, searching for a collective awakening grounded in resistance that disrupts the infrastructure of the colonial design. So this book, um, in addition to being a great catalog of, of what is happening in the art scene on the island post Hurricane Maria, um, I encourage everyone to go visit and, and go check out that um, Whitney exhibit. Um, I think that in Puerto Rican art, contemporary Puerto, Puerto Rican art is having a moment right now and we need to embrace that and uh, support our artists. Um, next we have a book by another friend of Centro, Edgardo Melendez. And this is the Puerto Rican problem in post-war New York City, migrant incorporation from the US colonial periphery. The Puerto Rican problem in post-war post -war New York City presents the first comprehensive examination of the emergence, evolution, and consequences of, quote unquote, the Puerto Rican problem campaign and narrative in New York City from 1945 to 1960. This notion originated in an intense public campaign that arose in reaction to the entry of Puerto Rican migrants to the city after 1945. The quote unquote problem narrative influenced their incorporation in New York City and other regions of the United States where they settled. The anti-Puerto Rican campaign led to the formulation of public policies by governments of Puerto Rico and New York City seeking to ease their incorporation in the city. Notions intrinsic to this narrative later entered American academia, like the culture of poverty and American popular culture, uh, e.g. West Side Story, which reproduced many of these stereotypes associated with Puerto Ricans at the time and shaped the way in which Puerto Ricans were studied and perceived by Americans. So this really sets the table for what the perception of Puerto Ricans as migrants were at the time, and also um, that movement really led to why something like Centro had to be uh, created in order to retake the narrative around what the Puerto Rican experience was. For anyone who's a fan or interested in studying Pedro Alviso Campos, we have this book here. It's called The Quickening of Pedro Alviso Campos, How Fenianism Galvanized the Last American Liberator. And this is by Ifa Rivera Serrano. While the Puerto Rican leader Pedro Alviso Campos studied in the United States between 1912 and 1921, his milieu was colored primarily with people, events, and ideas with one thing in common, a free Ireland. During those years, much of Irish America was preoccupied with Ireland's struggle for independence from Britain, and Alviso Campos was in the perfect spot, Cambridge, Massachusetts, to immerse himself in the history of the struggling Celtic island and the dreams of her revolutionary uh, patriots. In this brilliant retelling of Albizu's formative years in Harvard and beyond, the author sheds new light on the insurgent education he received from Irish nationalists known as Fenians and how it seeded the nationalist revolution against the US occupation of Puerto Rico. Pretty fascinating uh, topics in general. Um, Another title by, by a great friend of Centro. This is a uh, revisiting her stories, The Young Lord's Party, and this is by Iris Morales. Um, this is a book about activism. It's also about the battle of ideas. Feminists in the organization recognize that 
inequities as women of color were not solely the result of gender, but the outcome of intersecting social locations, class, race, and the legacy of history. Um, from the outset, the Young Lords ideology upheld gendered and inferior roles for women. Feminist members challenged the organization's sexism and advanced liberatory ideas and practices and charted new ground in the Puerto Rican diaspora. Combining primary sources and research, and research with lived experiencing, experiences, revisiting her stories, the Young Lords Party presents an insider perspective, interpreting the activism of the past to inspire a more just future. Okay, here we have a book of poetry, and this is um, The Rust of History. And this is a book of poems by Sotero Rivera Aviles, translated by Raquel Salas Rivera. The Rust of History presents the selected poems of Puerto Rican writer Sotero Rivera Aviles, translated from Spanish by the poet's grandson, the writer Raquel Salas Rivera. Lyrical, close, and resistant to the ease of closure, these poems cut across time to create a potent poetry of place, rooted and exploratory, bound to anti-imperialism. The poems unfold and keep unfolding how to live for and against home. The work is massive in its scope. Sotero Rivera Aviles writes about being a post-war veteran. He demystifies archetypes. He speaks openly about his disabilities. He complicates narratives of education and leaves a record of regionalisms from a world that no longer exists. The resulting body of work illuminates how revisiting loss can be a means of remembering. About translating this work, Raquel Salas Rivera writes, my hope since I undertook this work has been to lean into my obsession with Sotero Rivera Aviles and accept my desire to see myself, my queerness and my transness in his successful and failed attempts at upholding societal expectations. We can't spend our lives living under the shadows of our elders. Other things must be remembered if we are to reimagine the futures we inherit. Okay. Next, we have a book of novellas and stories by Yolanda Gallardo, and this is called Sinners on Fox Street. In this poignant and often humorous account of growing up in the Bronx in the 1950s, Yolanda Gallardo's mischievous young character vividly recalls her childhood as the neighborhood changed from Jewish to Latino. She and her siblings swam in the East River despite rats and garbage, watched police beat up local kids and got involved in gangs like the Royals and the Young Sinners. Their family was financially impoverished, but there were many happy times as they watched their parents dance to hick Spanish records, helped their mom cook pasteles and learn to dance the mambo and the cha-cha. Although set in a specific time and place, the novella and 10 stories in this collection depict universal experiences from girls and women having to prove themselves equal to boys and men around them to the loss of a child. Okay, we're getting to the end here. Um, this one is a pretty interesting topic. Um, I find this topic interesting anyway. Um, and this is uh, called Smoker Beyond the Sea, uh, the story of, of Puerto Rican tobacco. And it's by Juan Jose Valdrich. In this groundbreaking volume, Juan Jose Valdrich traces the deep changes affecting Puerto Rican tobacco growers and manufacturers and their export markets from the Spanish colonization of the island to the present. Based on more than 20 years of research in the United States and Puerto Rico, the book sheds light on the important history of tobacco in Puerto Rico while highlighting the people and practices that have indelibly shaped Puerto Rico and its future. Smoker Beyond the Sea, the story of Puerto Rican tobacco is a work of recovery that examines tobacco's transitions from medicinal use to roles fit for chewing and pipe smoking followed by the appropriation of the Cuban paradigm for cigars and cigarettes, and finally to the US models after the 1898 invasion. So if you're interested in the history of the tobacco industry in the island, a great title. Next, we have a book by Margaret M. Power, and this is called Solidarity Across 
the Americas, the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party and anti-imperialism. The Puerto Rican Nationalist Party understood that to successfully establish an independent nation, it needed to generate solidarity across the Americas with its struggle against US colonial rule. It invested significant energy, members and resources in attending regional conferences, distributing its literature throughout the hemisphere, creating solidarity committees, presenting its case to elected officials and the general public and promoting the cause of oppressed peoples. The hemispheric outpourings of solidarity with Puerto Rican independence have been obscured by larger later liberation movements, as well as the anti-colonial party's ultimate failure to achieve independence. However, as the book shows, they were nonetheless central to anti-imperialist nationalists and revolutionaries from New York City to Buenos Aires. So if anybody's interested in, in, these, in, those, in that early history of the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party, um, this seems like an integral part of that research. And I believe we have this last one. Last but not, but definitely not least. And this is a, this is a book uh, called Unpacked, A History of Caribbean Tourism. And this is by Blake C. Scott. It offers a critical novel perspective on the Caribbean's now taken for granted desirability as a tourist paradise. Dreams of tropical vacation have become a quintessential aspect of the modern Caribbean as millions of tourists travel to the region and spend extravagantly to pursue vacation fantasies. At the beginning of the 20th century, however, travelers from North America and Europe thought of the Caribbean as disease dangerous and according to many observers, the white man's graveyard. How then did a trip to the Caribbean become a supposedly fun and safe experience? Unpacked examines the historical roots of the region's tourism industry by following a well-traveled sea route linking the U.S. East Coast and the island of Cuba and the Isthmus of Panama. Uh, Blake C. Scott describes how the cultural and material history of U.S. imperialism became the heart of modern Caribbean tourism. In addition, he explores how advances in tropical medicine, perceptions of the tropical environment, and development of infrastructure and transportation networks opened a new playground for these visitors. So if you want to get uh, insight into the, the early creation of the tourism boom into the Caribbean, this uh, might be a good title for you. Um, so that brings us to the, the full list of titles. Um, again, this isn't, this, this isn't all of the new titles we've received in the library, but just a sampling. Um, we're always getting new books. And we're also always open to suggestions. If, if there is a book out there that you'd like to, to see added to our collection, feel free to email us um, at the library email address. Um, if any of the books that you've seen here, you'd like to come in and peruse and, and take a moment to, to look through them and take some notes, we are open to the public. Uh, so you can make an appointment on our webpage. Um, there's a form that you can fill out to request a, uh, an appointment to come in to view materials here at the library. Um, and as you see, my, my colleagues uh, in the chat have been populating um, the different links to, to the publishers where you can get more information about these titles, um, should you want to add any of them to your personal collection. Um, these books just represent a one part of the resources that Centro makes available to the public. Um, our collection of 20,000 um, books and periodicals. Um, we also have a great collection of movies and documentaries. And of course, we are a great archive. So with over 300 uh, archival collections representing the primary sources that give the evidence of the Puerto Rican experience um, in the diaspora. Um, so we encourage you to come and, and check out everything that we have made available. Um, we have previous book unboxings available on our YouTube channel. So you can see previous uh, years what we've, what we've purchased. Um, and uh, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put it in the Q&A. Um, make sure that you, um, if you haven't already, just introduce yourself in the chat and tell us where you're, where, where you're uh, viewing us from. And, um, and yeah, I'm gonna we'll be here for a few more minutes if anybody wants me to go back through any of the books or uh, if anybody has any questions about what we do, how we do it or why we do it, uh, please feel free to ask.
now see we see how we have some people here from Charleston, South Carolina, uh, other folks from Spencerport, New York. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, again, we put a lot of effort into these events and, and we want to make sure that everyone has insight into what it uh, is it, what it what is available out there. Um, just to, to to just to talk in, in general about what the acquisition process is like, you know, we receive you know all sorts of catalogs. And uh, we're subscribed to various services that um, provide us uh, lists of titles of newly available titles within the Puerto Rican studies. And um, we have uh, certain search par parameters set up um, to always send us and, and funnel us um, titles that might be relevant to our collection. So um, that's one way that we receive our books. Another way is that we we do receive lots of donations from from private donors, people who do send us books in, in the mail. Um, sometimes, you know, scholars and authors that have made use of the library and archive in their research like to send us copies of their book for inclusion within our collection, which is a nice way to sort of uh, close the loop on a lot of the research because they come here to Centro to do the research uh, or part of the research in their book. Um, then we get a nice acknowledgement and then that book becomes a greater part of the Puerto Rican Studies uh, collection here at the Library and Archive. And we have some people from California here, some other people from Connecticut, Bronx, New York, and Umacao and Yabucoa, that's good. Um, we try to to make sure, we, we also try to anticipate what the needs of, of the people are. Um, when people do to come and conduct research here, we try to get a sense of the topics of interest and then we try to purchase material that would be relevant to whatever is in the, in the current uh, zeitgeist of uh, scholarship. Um, but also, you know, we, we try to be, uh, uh, inclusive of of literature, of children's literature, as you saw, we we have you know things like board books and young adult literature. Um, we do have a pretty extensive collection of of uh, poetry and and works of theater as well. And we do have a question in the Q and A. Where can we find those research based archives? Were they shared already? So you can there's there is a link um, where you can where you can check out our archival database. So you can you can use uh, a database and and you can search across uh, over three hundred archival collections that are available here at Centro. Um, and some of the collections that we have include the papers of Pura Verpre and uh, Miguel Algarín. Um, we have the Centro records as a as part of our collection as well. Um, uh, other organizational collections that we have are the Puerto Rican Legal Defense and Education Fund. Uh, we have the papers of Aspira of New York. Um, we have the papers of organizations that uh, were from the Lower East Side, like Charas. Um, and uh, yeah, we have we have a lot of collections. Not and not all of them, you know, are are collections of, of high profile individuals. A lot of just you know people who lived their lives and documented their lives. Um, those have become integral parts of the central archives as well. I do encourage everyone to go to the, the Centro Bodega because uh, that is where you can actually buy books that are produced by the Centro Press. So they just recently published um, the 50 Years of Puerto Rican Studies at CUNY book, which is fantastic. I would say anybody who wants to get more insight into not just the history of Centro, but the history of the Puerto Rican studies within the CUNY system. It's it's vital to, to any research on that topic. Um, and also you can subscribe to the Centro Journal, um, uh, which is always a great uh, source of, of essays and, and thought on contemporary issues within the Puerto Rican studies. And my colleagues are, are, are in the chat are sharing the links uh, again, where you can order material. Um, and, uh, and you know, if, if you come across any articles from the Central Journal and, and you may not have access to it, um, you can always contact us and we can provide 
um, links to to where you can access those articles free of charge. Again, you know, we do, we do everything you know to the best of our abilities free of charge uh, here at Centro, um, just to make things as accessible as possible. And uh, let's see if we have we do have another question. What is your current and favorite reading? That's really tough. Um, and I, I, you know, I can, I, I think it's the burden of a lot of librarians is that we tend to like read one or two chapters from like a, a dozen books at any given time. Um, but I would say the um, Milagro Dennis's Rosario's new book, um, I would say was really caught my eye. Um, Drops of Inclusivity, um, the one that examines race and racism on the island of Puerto Rico um, by providing a historical narrative of Black Puerto Ricans and Afro Wadiquas. Um, I think that one that one's really interesting. That one, that one uh, I had to I had trouble putting down, um, so I could continue working. It's it's a it's a the blessing and a curse at times. You got so many great new books and and you want to sit down and read them all. Um, but it, it definitely that that one um and it's a suny press book as well so it's a it's a really great high quality book and milagros is a, is a great faculty member here um and uh yeah just seeing her seeing her title uh, out there when we when i received that I was i was really happy um so yeah that's that's the one that that probably caught my eye the most um most recently but again we have that that list is available for everyone to to look at um and uh, with reference to how you can tell what books we have at Centro, you can search the catalog. We, if you go to the Hunter Library catalog, you can search the Hunter Library catalog. Um, uh, for, you can search by title, keyword, author, um, and you get an idea of, of what uh, titles we have in our collection uh, from the 20,000 some odd books that we have just on the Puerto Rican studies. Um, we do have, uh, a lot of material. Sometimes I'm shocked by how some of the things that, that I find on the shelves, um, just because we have so much and we've amassed so much in, in really the 50 years of Centro's history. Um, what what really always uh, makes me feel very proud of the work that we do at Centro is that the library was always uh, envisioned to be a part of what Centro was going to be from the very beginning. Um, and it started as a really modest uh, collection just a couple of bookshelves in, in an office and then and now it's 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 grown to to encompass you know one of the most uh, rich uh, research collections within within the CUNY system I would say and with that I think um, unless there are any final questions uh, we're going to close out our library lunch hour for the day um, again my name is Aniva Larocho I'm the library manager here at the Center for Puerto Rican Studies Library and Archive um, Oh, people are asking, how can you help support Centro? If you go to our website, there is a there is a place where if you want to donate to Centro, you can donate to Centro. You can also support Centro by uh, shopping at our bodeguita and, and buying books and 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 uh, documentaries from the bodega. But the best thing that you could do to to support Centro is keep attending our events, our virtual events, and our in person events. Subscribe to our newsletter. Um, you know, engage with us on social media, you know, like and, and share what you see in, in social media. And uh, we, we, we understand that like there are people all over the country and a lot of people can't make it to the library and archive. But if you do find yourself in the New York area, we would love to have you and you can always come to the library and we'd be glad to welcome you here. Um, so thanks again, everyone. Uh, I would say this is another successful library lunch hour for today. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep doing my job and keep buying great books for um, the Puerto Rican community and about the Puerto Rican community. And uh, they'll be here waiting for you uh, when you decide to come visit us. So everyone have a, have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you again for taking your lunch hour out to spend some time with uh, your favorite Puerto Rican librarian here at the Center for Puerto Rican Studies. And we will see you hopefully soon. <laughs>